So starting chapter three, molecules, compounds, and chemical equations. So here's an interesting question that I do not have an answer for. How many different substances exist? I don't know that anybody really has an answer for that. It's going to be a really big number. Here, take this one. Um, there are 91 naturally occurring elements, and those elements can combine in different combinations to form compounds. You could have one atom each of two different elements, or you could have two to one or three to one, and that's just between two elements. And you could also have three or four or five elements or more. So the combinations are pretty amazing. We know that the substances around us have lots of different properties and characteristics. Uh, some of them are toxic, some of them are good for us, some of them are hard, soft, gases, liquids. And the diversity of these substances is a direct result of the ability of elements to form compounds. So form lots of different compounds with different properties. So let's look at um, hydrogen, oxygen, and water. When elements combine to form a compound, the properties of the compound are vastly different from the properties of the elements. So if we look at this little table here, looking at selected properties of hydrogen and oxygen, they both have very, very low boiling points. They are gases at room temperature. Hydrogen gas is explosive, and oxygen gas, while it can't actually burn, it's necessary for combustion. So both of these are fire hazards. You combine those two elements to form water, water has a boiling point of plus 100 degrees Celsius. It's a liquid at room temperature, and not only is it not flammable, we use it to put out fire. So the, the properties have changed considerably due to these two co elements combining to form a compound. Any questions? So you may have heard about uh, vaccines containing mercury, right? It's got thimerosal in it. Thimerosal has mercury in it. Well, yes, elemental mercury is toxic. Some mercury compounds are toxic. Does that make everything that has mercury in it toxic? No, it doesn't. Because when it, it becomes part of a compound, the properties change. So we've talked about the law of definite proportions. Water has a definite proportion. It's a compound. It has a definite proportion of hydrogen to oxygen. In a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen, you could have any proportion, a variable proportion. So here we have an illustration, a balloon containing two different gases, oxygen and hydrogen gases. And you could have a lot of one and a little of the other or equal amounts. It could be different different proportions. Whereas in water, which is a compound, the proportion of hydrogen to oxygen is always the same because each little particle contains two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. Does 